Chair, if you all may be seated. Mr. Sanchez, you may continue your questioning, sir. You're still under the oath that I gave to you previously. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Hey, Darren, I think where we left off, we were uh, at the end of September, heading on to the October 8th and October 9th days that are very important in this case. Yes, sir. So, uh, you received, started receiving text messages uh, and phone calls from uh, from Jennifer talking about the, uh, the cutting of the hair and about her hold, him holding her underwater uh, and needing CPR. Uh, and so that alerted you or made you think that she was in serious danger more than ever before, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, we looked at, at the, we see that the call logs show that there was a real spike and phone calls between you and her uh, late September heading up to uh, uh, the October 9th day. Is that true? Well, yes, sir. I mean, we, we were talking uh, daily. Like I said, he was starting to uh, uh, abuse her at that point. Um, that's when at, at night I was getting the text messages from, from Jamie stating that uh, uh, he was getting ready because they're uh, – uh, their, their, their 15 year anniversary of when they met on October 9th was coming up and he was going to start planning something special for her. Did he tell you what that special thing was? Uh, yeah, uh, I th that waited until like I think like about uh, until like the first of October but he said that he really enjoyed the having her under underwater in the hot tub that he was going to see how many guys she can handle that way. Um, so I was believing that you know it's going to be back to uh, a gang scenario and he was going to hold her underwater for 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 multiple guys and did uh um and did jennifer know this too or i mean did you, talk, you talked about it with her after he texted you obviously yes um around this time or soon or close to october 9th did jennifer ask you to kill him Yes. She do you, said. Do you, remember, do you remember when that was? The exact date? Yes. Not the exact date. I would probably have to say uh, October 1st or 2nd. Um, she had talked on the phone. Well, it, it would have been that, that, that weekend. Because um, he wasn't going to, he wasn't taking her anywhere on the weekends anymore, but he would go out. Jamie and Amber would go out shopping uh, during the day. And so she was totally by herself, so she would call at that time, and we could talk you know, freely. And she got to the point where she said that it, it, it's enough is enough. I can't do this anymore. She was talking about her having a way to, to, to poison him. So she would end it. And- uh, How did you respond to that? I, I was shocked again. Brought up that you know we could go to the police again. Again, she brought up Amber. She didn't want any of that stuff involved. Where if Jamie can just disappear out of the picture, that would solve everything. And did she relay this to you because she was afraid? She might die from this seven-person uh, hot tub incident that he was promising. Yes, I, I mean, she, I think she finally got to the point, you know, with with me telling her, you know, what with, with the text, you know, I would then, you know, relate to her, you know, on the phone. It's like, yeah, this is what Jamie's been sending me. That you know, that Friday is something special he's planning on, you know, and uh, she was like, I can't go through another weekend like this. So with her telling you this and you receiving these text messages uh, who, from who you thought was Jamie, uh, did you feel she was in danger that day? Uh, yes, I did, mortal danger. And so uh, at this point, again, she didn't want to involve the police again, even though she was in, every fear, single, in fear for her life? In fear for her life, yes. Every time, and, and this is where she used my, my honor and my love for, for my girls because I would want to protect them as most I can. Jennifer didn't want Amber to know anything about this. She didn't want 
any of this to, to come out in a bad way. She just wanted it to stop. So she wanted you to save her, but she also wanted it in a way where, uh, where her nothing her, her daughters would know. Nothing would. Jamie's yeah, family would know. Nobody would know. Right. It would just just happen. Is this when you decided uh, to come down to Dallas or Tennessee in order to, to save her? I started to mentally prep. I don't think I didn't make the exact decision until I left Thursday afternoon. I mean, I didn't leave late. I mean, I'm thinking I should have left earlier, but I was I was waiting up until that point because I was still still talking to Jen about we can go a different way. You know, I mean. Did you ever talk about just her leaving, just like leaving with you? Yeah, from from the from you know, the, earlier when it started, uh, you know, I wanted her just to leave. But then again, she brought it up, like, well, I, you know, I can't leave Amber here by herself, and I understood that. I mean, a Amber looks exactly like her mom. Uh, I talked to them on the phone; they sound exactly alike. So, if, if Jennifer's out of the picture. If Jamie's in this mental state where he's already snapped, he's doing this to his wife of 15 years, what's he going to do to his stepdaughter? Uh, you know, and I couldn't bring both of them to, to, to Tennessee. Amber was working at the time. Um, she was heavily involved in a political campaign, uh, running it for a uh, run of representatives in Arizona. Um, so I couldn't like just you know no, so show up. Let me let me just yes, slow you down. She was working she was working a campaign in Arizona, but she was doing that remotely from yeah. Dallas. Yes, yes, sir. So you know, big internet stuff. You know, with, with Zoom, with all the internet stuff that she was doing. So, so in your mind, did you feel you were out of time at that point, and you had to do something? Yes. And so you decided that. What was necessary at that I'm point? Inject leading at this point, Your Honor. Did you think it was necessary? Yes or no? Did you think it was necessary? Yes, I uh, did. Uh, to come to Dallas and eliminate the threat that you perceived, based on emails, text messages, and phone conversations with Jennifer. Yes, I did. And did you believe it was immediately necessary for you to come down? Yes, the, the, the key date was October 9th. And this was October 8th where you made the decision? Yes, sir. And so when you woke up, what day did you start driving to Dallas? No, uh, that uh, October 8th, that, that Thursday afternoon. I believe from the, the, the photos of me at the pilot, I think it had me like at around 4 p.m.-ish on Thursday. Um, and so uh, even while you're driving down, you still think the danger exists right there, right? And the whole, the oh, whole way down. Uh, Do yeah. You, I, yes I, or no? Yes. I knew it did. And so uh, you actually you drove straight. You didn't stop at a hotel. You just stopped to put gas and maybe used a restroom. Uh, no, sir. Uh, yeah, straight through. So you drive straight all through the night. And what's going through your head the whole way? <sighs> um, starting to uh, transition back into my military mindset that I was on, on, on a, a rescue to save Jennifer and Amber from this horrible man uh, that I needed to be there. Um, you know, you, you, you're discussing it like, you know, driving all the way through like it was a, a, a big thing. Me being Special Forces, I mean, not, not to brag, but this is just a an everyday mission for us. 24 hours is not overwhelming whatsoever. Was this a more emotional uh, mission that you, you, than any other mission you may have had? Uh, the, the most I've ever had and it really on that drive it started building as I got closer especially when I, I hit the Texas state line uh, passing through uh, Texarkana getting closer to Dallas all my emotions with everything started started to ramping up yes or no was it because uh you were getting closer to the danger that you've been perceiving this whole time yes 
Um, so you get to Dallas. Now, you, we've seen evidence that you, you turned off your phone. Yes, I did. Why'd you do that? Again, we were trying to, to make it where nobody would find out the truth about anything. You know, where Jamie could be out of the picture, he could have a you know, funeral, blah, blah, blah. everybody, you, you know, mourn him for the man he was, can remember him who the man he was, not the, the broken man with COVID and the stresses and, and everything happened to him. And so, uh, you, know, to, to, you know, that's why I was trying to protect, uh, you know, keeping everything secret that way. Were you protecting yourself? Or were you protecting Amber, or I'm sorry, uh, Jennifer? trouble a little bit of both I mean it overlaps it was keeping us both safe so you're, you're driving down you hit the Texas border and then as we saw you end up uh, not close to where you were supposed to go no sir uh, I why is that <laughs> one of my PTSD TBI triggers is I don't like a lot of people, and I, I, I don't like driving. I get lost easy. Um, I, can drive, I can find you anywhere in Iraq. I, get, I still get lost in Tennessee driving around. As I was getting close to Dallas, you know, I was just using the regular old uh, 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 map. Dallas has a whole bunch of construction going on on the highways. It's at nighttime. It's dark. Has and I didn't realize how big Dallas was. This is. Let, let me ask you this. Uh, I mean, Cumberland Furnace, Tennessee, is nowhere near as big as Dallas. No, I mean, not even even Nashville is. I mean, compared. I mean, you know, not, I think Nashville is, is big. You know, with the lights and stuff like that. I think it's maybe one third the size of Dallas. So you get to Dallas. I'm getting to Dallas. You yes. Get to Dallas, and you end up south of the area where the, the, the address in, in, in Oak Cliff, right? Yes, I'm trying to look for the dang... Uh, Clarendon, I think, is the name? That, that main road that's, that's right there, I believe. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to remember. It's, I know it starts with a C. Um, you know, um, I'm on, I believe that's 135 going south. I'm trying to look for Clarendon. There's a whole bunch of construction. I just, uh, I, get, I literally get lost. And, and I keep going, and then I guess south of Dallas, you know, it, it uh, you know, all of a sudden it seems like the city kind of dies off. <laughs> it becomes, you know, the lights down, and then that's when I, 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 I knew, I look around and I'm lost. So, did you end up pulling over at some point? I did, right then. Um, so let's slow, slow you down. Yes, sir. I know you want to stay on. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, it's again part of that's all right. So, let's, yeah. uh, so you you you, uh, you you stop yourself and you try to get your bearings. Uh, yeah, I pull off to the the side of the uh, off to the highway. There's a like a parking area. I pull into. I feel myself getting into my PTSD spiral. All these emotions. You, 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 you use that term PTSD spiral. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I mean that's. What doctors have told you happens to you when you get high stress and things like that. Uh, yes, right? I've been and through. I've so, been. Th and, this, and this is something that you know. It's not like self-diagnosis. This is what doctors have told you. This, yeah, I, I went through PTSD programs through the military and through the VA. All right. Well, let, let me slow you down. So you, uh, yeah, you, uh, you pull over. Yes. Sir. And you and you and you, you you try to gather yourself. Is that when you turn on the your iPad? Well, n not not yet. I mean, I'm pulling over. I stop. I feel all these emotions coming on. I, I knew I'm lost. What am I going to do? She's going to be attacked within hours. I sit there thinking the only way I'm going to be able to find her place is if I turn on my iPad. Or, I mean, it's my Galaxy Samsung, actually. To, you know, turn on my Google Maps. That's the only way I'm going to be able to get back on there. But I know as soon as I hit that button, I'm leaving a digital trail. <laughs> but
but all the emotions of everybody that I've lost, starting with my my team sergeant's kids, Ethan. Fiction narrative at this point, Your Honor. Oh, you can answer the question as it relates to your decision making in the car that night. Go ahead. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, started thinking about about Ethan. He was my team sergeant's son who was murdered in Kentucky that we were there with, that we couldn't stop or do anything with. My granddaughter, Skyly, she died when I was in Iraq. She drowned. Thinking about it, I was talking to my daughter Summer about it and saying, Dad, why aren't you here to save Skyly? My best friend, Don, committed suicide. I couldn't stop it. I was thinking about these things. Stuff that I couldn't do, I couldn't stop. I had promised myself if I was ever in a position to help somebody that I cared for and loved, I would do it. We have a saying in the military, it's better to be judged by 12 than carried by six. Meaning, there are sometimes actions we are going to have to take. Objection narrative, Your Honor. So, uh, the, all these emotions are going through your mind when yes. you're pulled over and you're reflecting back to, this, uh, to the losses you've had even after the losses you've had in Iraq, right? Yes, on top of all my buddies I work with. Okay. And one of them was your granddaughter who died while you were in Iraq. Yes, sir. And you couldn't be here to, to save her in any way, if you could have, correct? No. Okay. And so Ethan was a... Uh, He's my team sergeant's son around the dogs. Um, this was back in 2008, of October 2008. This, this was the incident where, uh, where someone had uh, broken into the house. Is that the one? Uh, he, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Someone had broken into their house and burned the house. Right? Objection, relevance. Same. But you were thinking about the loss of your of your 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 best friend, Ethan, your granddaughter. All these emotions are coming over you at that time, and you did you feel that you weren't going to lose another person that was that you loved? I couldn't, and she asked me, and before I left. One of the last messages, one of the last phone calls, you know, I think that's even on, on the record that we had that Thursday. I told her she was not going to go through another bad weekend ever again. I promised her. So I knew as soon as I hit that on button, most likely I was going to be caught. But it was what could I live with? Was I going to go back to Tennessee, not doing anything, and realize that Jennifer is dead because she was drowned or she's in a coma? And what would happen to Amber? So, I, so what did you do next? I, I made the decision. I mean, I, I, I couldn't live with that anymore. Not to fail somebody else that I cared for. So I powered on my tablet. And then that took you to the address. Took me right, right to the address. Okay. Uh, but and while you're driving there, you still feel there's an immediate danger that she's gonna be hurt, right? I, I, I know it. I mean, starting that, you know, that morning, it, it, you know, he had made it clear to me leading up to this that October 9th was their day. So when you get there, and then you went to a property that was next door to their house? Uh, yes, Jennifer had told me that their immediate house right there was abandoned. Nobody was there. Uh, you know, Jennifer told me that, you know, that, 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 you know, that was, you know, nobody was there. Did you know, she probably. tell you to stay there? Uh, yes, so, well, she told me that it would probably be a good place. And that's where you see um, the video of uh, me walking back there, um, looking at it. Now, um, you, it was at nighttime when you got there? 
I, be I believe on that video camera, it was like two in the morning, it was so ish. So it was nighttime. Yeah, 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 it was totally dark. So you get there, you, you, uh, you're watching the house, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you listening also? Oh yeah, I was, I'm right there. I mean, uh, you saw on, on that video, there was that, the, uh, the, the wall fence right there next to, to their house. You know, that's where I set up right along that wall. I mean, I'm as close to their house as possible. I know the question might be, well, like, well, if you really felt she was in danger, why didn't you just bust into the house? Uh, we, we get trained like the ATF does. You know, the agents, they do their recon. Um, the ATF knew that my daughters were home. They didn't want to do anything to me with, with them home because, you know, my daughters could be hurt. Amber was home. If I did anything, busting into the house, I could not control the situation. Amber could be hurt. Jennifer could be hurt. You know, they had their dog Maggie that they loved. You know, it was a, a, a bad situation. And, and coming down, there was not going to be any collateral damage. Nobody else was going to get hurt. I was going to do everything to make sure that did not happen. So, but at this time, do you still think the, 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 the danger is there? Oh, I, I know it is. I mean, like I said, it's key, the, the key time is October 9th and the dog walks. And, you know, I'm talking, uh, you know, from the emails from Rob. Let me hold you back. Yeah. I know you want to keep talking. No, I'm sorry. I have yes. to ask you a question for it to Understand. do it the right way. Okay. So, um, you had, Jennifer had also told you not only that this was the, that, that he was going to hurt her in the way that she described to you, but she had also told you in the past that he would also hurt her on walks. On the walks, yes, sir. How would he? Do you know what? How, that, how that, he, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. How, how would he uh, hurt her on walks? That's when she would get the burns. Uh, we got that, you know, I got the email from Rob um, and then talking to Jennifer on the phone. She had told me about. He started to, uh, you know, sometimes would abuse her on the walks, and then she told me uh, about the burns, and so then I put the two together. So you're outside the house, daylight comes, and uh, do you hear the door open? Yes. And uh, what do you see? Um, I hear uh, Jennifer talking. I hear her voice. Um, I think we saw that on, on the ring video, and she's coming walking out. I hear him uh, uh, come in, and first into my view as, as they're crossing the property right on the sidewalk is it was Maggie. She's leading the way. Jennifer's holding her leash. Jennifer passes, and then here comes Jamie. Did you act immediately? Yes, I do. Did you act immediately because you felt it was necessary? I, I knew it was necessary. I mean, I, did I was. Did you believe that you have to? Did you have to act uh, immediately to prevent her and Rhett from being, being hurt? Yes, sir. It, it, that was that moment. As soon as Jamie left the house, was the first time I would be able to safely take care of the threat to Jennifer, and so I acted. When you acted, what does that mean? That's when I, I fired, I fired my gun into Jamie. How many times? It was uh, well, I fired a total of eight shots, I believe, and seemed like only seven hit. Uh, I missed one. Um, I, you know, I started at, out in his chest. I saw, uh, you know, from the autopsy report, you see see the one in his upper right chest um, as he was walking. So then. You see from the also the autopsy report then, so it's, uh, uh, that gets hit. Jamie starts to rotate to his right. That's what makes him fall. That's why on the top autopsy report also you saw the contusions and bruises along his knee, his shin, his uh, right side because he's falling that way. And now, so, did you realize this when you were doing it, or was it all? Yeah. I mean, you're, you're speaking of these injuries like you knew those were the actual injuries, or is it because you've seen the autopsy now? Well, no, no, sir. I mean, when the visualizing there, I, I saw him. I, I knew I saw. I shot his chest. He started to turn, and then I continued to put in, in his in, in his side. I mean, into his 
I was aiming for the center mass, but he was turning. And when you were doing this, was it your belief, though, that you were shooting someone who was dangerous? Yes, he was going to... If I didn't act, Jennifer was going to die that day. She was going to be drowned. And that was your, your belief at that time, in your mind? Yes, sir. Again, based on everything we've heard prior to this? Everything. And so uh, you shoot him. Yes. And then uh, you, he falls. Yes. And do you approach uh, them? Yes. So I, I end up shooting the, the four times. He falls completely down. Being a medic, treating people on the battlefield, the human body can take a lot of damage and still live. I did not want Jamie to suffer, even though in my eyes he was a monster. I did not want him to suffer. So I approached and I fired the rounds into his head. By training, you know, should have only been two. It ended up being three because at that time, then I was transitioning from taking out Jamie to now I'm going to attack Jennifer to give her plausible deniability to anything, to give her her alibi. And so this is the first time that I've seen Jennifer since, what, 1993 in person. I'm getting ready to, the person that I love, I had to approach her, knock her down to the ground, and start to duct tape her. And so I'm, I mean, right then, so. That's the first time you touched her since? 93. And the only time you touched her? Yes, sir. The only time I touched her, threw her to the ground, and I punched her and slapped her. Did she know, did she know you were going to do that? No, sir. I, I didn't tell her anything beforehand, beforehand, and she was, you hear the screams. I mean, they're blood curling screams. They were making me sick as I was doing it. Now, there was, uh, there was some blood on the gun. Do you know how that got there? Uh, uh, most likely, I mean, you saw the, the puddle, I believe. So I came around from his right and I crossed through it. So I believe it was close that way. Did you, did you touch Jamie at all? I mean, cause how would the gun get on the slag? Excuse me. I mean, the blood, I'm sorry. <clears throat> The blood get on the slide. Do you do you remember? No. Now <coughs> you've done missions before to save people. Yes. Uh, you said that you've never been as emotional. No. Than never. this before. Never. So you're touching the woman that you love, that you profess your love for, for the first time and only time in all this time, uh, and. Uh, What's your brain doing at that point? What's your, what are you thinking? Is it, is it racing? What's oh yeah, I, I'm in shock because she is she's fighting she's fighting back at me, and you hear the screams. I mean they're loud on the thing. I was right over her. They were earth shattering to me. They were making me sick. As did that you, was, did you uh, did you take a ring off of her? I, I tried to. I tried to take it off. It wasn't coming off. Um, I think I got partially off and and, and then. That's when um, uh, 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 Mr. Emery, you know, he, he's, he's starting to walk down there. So I, I, I come around, Jamie to the right, so we, we, we're back along the fence. Yeah, so let, let me stop you there. Did you know his name before? No, sir. No, it was from just his testimony. So you didn't know, you just, you saw him, had you ever seen him before ever? No, sir. So he comes out, he's approaching you. Right, I see, so as I, as I come around Jamie, I take down Jennifer, I'm facing the street where Mr. Emery's walking towards me this way. So, you know, the blood clutter and the screams, I'm trying to duct tape her, and, uh, and then that's, you know, I start, see, he's starting to post more, so I, that's why I decided to leave. Did you have more bullets at that point? Yes, I mean, so after I did the last shot, the slide kicks back open, you know, it stays in the reverse, uh, you know, by my training, I, I did have another uh, magazine in my pocket. I should have switched out magazines then. 
and, and you know, continued on, I, I didn't. I was not going to hurt. There was going to be no collateral damage whatsoever. If I was going to be in danger, then I was going to be in danger. So I just closed my slide release, which closed the gun. And like Mr. Emery said, I kept it to my side. I walked. We made eye contact. He turned to run, and I walked right to my truck. Now, when you were near your truck or when you were in it, did you see the individual that, was, that took the picture of your truck? I believe, so there was the abandoned house. I think it was the second or third house down. Looking When I looked to my left, I saw people standing in their yard, uh, two individuals. Uh, but you didn't threaten them or do anything like that to them? No, sir. No. I, I just got in my truck and I drove off, you know, and you saw in the video, I, I didn't speed off. I wasn't going to hurt anybody else. I took my time. It was, I was extremely nervous. You know, this was, I, I, I knew, you know, if the cops come, it could, you know. What, what, would, you, what would have happened if the, the police would have shown up right there? Were you going to fight them? No, sir. I would have turned myself in. So... You get in your car and you drive back to Tennessee. Yes. Straight. Did you stop anywhere else? Oh, no, I mean, just for gas and, and refueling. Uh, my first stop was. How did you feel about the fact that you <coughs> killed Jennifer's husband? I felt. I, I didn't like. I didn't. <coughs> I'm not proud to do it. You know, I wasn't like, yay. You know, something great happened. No, I was I was hurt, but I saved Jennifer and I saved Amber. Now, uh, the fact that you knew you had saved her and saved Amber, did that give you so, you know solace, or did that help you when you were sitting in jail? When I was sitting in jail? Yeah. Uh, yes, that's the one. Now looking back on, that's the one grace that Jennifer gave me. She never told me everything was fake. When I got arrested, you know, that first day in jail was, was, was horrible. I was just, I mean, I let everybody down and family and, and everything. I started to, you know, get control of myself. But, you know, I was like, okay, I, I, I can do this okay. Because, you know, at the time I was thinking I was, I was the noble soldier that did my job. I did what I was trained to do. I protected people. I kept them from a monster. So that's what I believed. Now, there came a time, though, where you eventually found out that Jamie, in fact, was not a monster. Yes. As a matter of fact, I tried to convince you of that uh, when I first met you, was not true? Yes. Uh, but eventually, you were presented with evidence that the emails were fake and that you were, in fact, not talking to Jane, right? Yes, sir. And, I, and you were presented with evidence that you, uh, that Rob, you were not talking to Rob, uh, is that true? Correct. And also evidence that you were not texting with Jamie also. Yes. And that really the only person you were really talking to all this time <clears throat> was Jennifer. Yes, sir. That How did that make you feel? I was, I was devastated. That took an innocent life. I took Amber's dad from her. A man who's like me. I, my, my two oldest daughters are my stepdaughters, but they're my daughters. I would never ever hurt Amber that way. Take her dad from that. That's what gets me how Jennifer could do that to her daughter. Take her dad away from her. Now, while you were in, in jail, Jennifer was still reaching out to you, wasn't she? Uh, yes. It, I received a letter shortly after I would talk to everybody. I know we, 
we've shown this letter before, but is this the letter she sent you uh, when you were in jail? Yes, sir. And again, how do you know that's Jennifer that's sending you that letter? Do you recognize her writing? Uh, no, uh, and I wouldn't say the writing. Um, it looks like it, but I mean, I only got a couple notes once or twice during the summertime she wrote, but I, I, w I wouldn't know it right offhand. No, no, the key's for me here on this. Let, let, let me take you through it. Oh, yes, sir. Um, uh, the five, she starts off with 575. Yes, that's... Again, again the code that uh, was used for, uh, for you to know that it was actually her writing. Yes, that, that, is, that is our you know, first code that now, we have. The little angel at the bottom, is that significant? I call her angel. So uh, you received this letter and after you've already found out that she lied to you this whole time and that she duped you. Yes, sir. Uh, and <coughs> she's still telling you that she never made any fake email accounts and that she never lied to you. Yes, sir. What did you think about that? It made me sick. I was devastated. I mean, to, to think about all the trauma she put me through for months, the anguish that I went through reading all the stuff that was being done to her, her telling me everything. I was just, I, I couldn't believe it. If I had not seen the evidence in front of me shown to me by the detectives of the injury pictures that she used. They showed me the injury pictures from the, her automobile accidents. They had the reports from the investigators of her auto accidents. They had the... the Objection narrative, Your Honor. You saw the reports. Yes or no, did you see the reports from the uh, investigators of the auto accident with the pictures? Yes, sir. Um, now, evidence, uh, text messages and uh, were deleted in this case, right? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, we've already heard evidence that uh, sometime in August, I believe, you were having a storage issue with your phone? Yes, it was. Now, um, and it's in the WhatsApp uh, conversations that have been admitted in the evidence. Yes, sir. Uh, but you weren't receiving text messages from her around that time, and you didn't know why. Correct. My, it seemed like my phone had just locked up. And even in those conversations, in the WhatsApp conversations, uh, indicate her telling you, like, you know, I've been sending them, but I don't know why you're not getting them. You weren't getting them. Right. Okay. And so yeah. and at that point, you went, uh, did you go to uh, Verizon, your provider, and have them help you with that storage issue? Yes, I did. I called them. I think there was an email or something that they said, you know, I'm calling Verizon, or maybe it was a text that I had. Yes, I contacted Verizon. And the jury has seen all that. We want, yes, sir. We want you to, to no, tell yes, us let them know. Word. Okay, so you, uh, you, you uh, take the phone in and they had to delete messages off your phone to give you more storage. It's, no, I, you know, I didn't take it in. You know, I called them. I called the, the line. And like I said, uh, that's why for two days, it took me two days to figure it out. It took, them, took Verizon two days to figure it out that um, I was trying to keep all the text messages. I wanted proof of everything that was happening. And uh, apparently... I, you know, I've never texted ever before in my life this much. I mean, I, I, you, they put the numbers up there. It's in the hundreds of thousands of times. Um, apparently, there is a, uh, a, a limit <laughs> that they have. And like I said, it took Verizon two. That's why I was on, uh, on WhatsApp for two days. It took them finally to, like, okay, to get your phone working again, you have to delete all that stuff and reset your phone. And so I did. And then uh, there came another time. Did that happen again, or why did you have to delete messages again? It, it was the uh, end of November. Again, because, you know, once I got my phone back up, I started collecting everything again. You know, I wasn't, I, I was not purposefully deleting messages to hide anything. So it locked up again in November. When it started acting the same way, I knew probably what it was. 
And so I, I, I just did it on my own. I, I reset it. But that was at the end of November. And then, you know, we have everything in, in December kept. And uh, those are the text messages. And the emails were in your inbox. Yes, sir. I kept all the emails. As we've seen, you know, uh, all the emails uh, that were recovered were not from Jennifer, right? They were from her computer. Oh, you know, everything that's in evidence? Yes. No, that's from my computer. It's from my, my accounts. No. Had she, had she asked you to wipe your, your computer? Yes, she did. And, and, did, yeah. and what, why didn't you do it? I wanted to keep everything. Um, well, you know, she even told me, hey, email everything to Rob. Why I email, you know, why I was talking to Rob by email, I didn't know who Rob was. Um, in my training, we're, since, since we're a small 12, you know, 12 men. Let me take you back a little bit. Yes. So you, uh, uh, she asked you to delete emails. Yes. And then she asked you, did she, uh, she asked you to uh, uh, give them to Rob for safekeeping? Yes, that's what she, she told me. She's like, you know. But you didn't do that. Well, I sent them to Rob. You know, that shows that I, I did send them to Rob, but I didn't delete my emails because like I said, in, in my training, we always have just what the team knows to have an escape route. So this is the really the only time I, I, I lied to Jennifer because she asked me, "Did you delete? Did you delete all your stuff?" I told her yes, knowing that I didn't, because she was me. She was she was adamant about it, and at first I was like, "I mean, we don't need to. We, we should save all the stuff." And that's when she said, "We'll just send everything to Rob. He'll keep it." And I said, oh, "Okay," and I did send them to Rob. But I kept all mine. You kept the copy for yourself. I yeah, I kept them all in there. E even on the f for the first time in my life, I made a, a folder on Outlook to save everything in. And I put them in there. And so, uh, um, but eventually, uh, after October 9th, she asked you to delete text messages, also. Uh, yes, but I I did it. I was keeping it until my phone locked up again. And that was in November. End of November. You know, and then again, uh, you know, she, you know, all the text messages we saw in December. She even asked me again right before we got arrested, like in January, because she was coming in, and that's what she said. She was resetting her phone on, on the phone calls to me. She said, you know, you should probably erase your stuff, and I told her, yeah, and I didn't. And you didn't do. No, sir. And she direct. She's the one that directed you to take that. T, which stood for Tennessee, people thought it was Texas Rangers. Yes, sir. Um, she's the one that uh, told you to do that. Yes, sir. And again, you know, like we read in the email, you know, I really didn't want to. It was a sticker that, 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 that one of my daughters gave me. But again, I don't like to, I don't like to lie. So I finally said, yeah, I did. But I mean, I knew in my mind, I mean, that's the other thing. I, I knew in my mind that, you know, I, I left digital evidence with my pad and I saw the picture of the truck that they had you know I wasn't you know it's I knew law enforcement was good enough where they can track down a registration and oh my gosh the only truck that Darren the only vehicle Darren Lopez owns is a black Nissan truck so I wasn't too worried about the the, 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 the T sticker it wasn't going to make a big difference but again to uh, appease her put her herself at mind and, and like I said I don't like lying I, I took it off, but again. Objection narrative. Uh, but again, you know, she had asked me to clean it real well. I didn't do that. I just took it off, and you know, the, you saw the residue. You saw the pictures of the residue. No, the, the weapon that was recovered. Were you trying to hide that? No, sir. Um, what, what, what were you? What, what did you do with the weapon? Uh, okay. Um, you saw the pictures. It said they found it under a bunch of. Uh, yeah, well, it was in the. It, it was in the backpack. It was in that backpack that I, I had used uh, on the mission. Why did you Why did you get rid of the weapon? Because when I when I came back from there, I started having thoughts about I did not want this weapon. Any part of this weapon ever again used bad. My plan was to, in, in Nashville, usually about twice or three times a year. There's a, a, you know, the police have a turn in for, you know, weapons. It's just, uh, you know, they, they offer up. Objection narrative. And it, it was, what, you can finish answering the question. And so my plan was to, uh, uh, to turn, 
I was only going to get rid of this weapon if I knew positively that that gun was going to be destroyed properly. Okay. I, you, had, you, had, you had indicated that uh, you didn't want that gun getting some some young kid getting it or or somebody that shouldn't have it, right? Anything or even you know because even I could have taken it apart and maybe thrown parts away, but I just. I'm a, I'm a lawful gun owner. I've been in the military. You can scrounge items. I didn't want any part of that weapon ever again used, ever. No, you no, uh, you had a uh, a permit to carry that weapon, right? Yes, sir. I have a Tennessee gun uh, permit. Um, eventually, you know the investigate. You, I mean, you knew it was a matter of time that you were going to get caught. Yes. Uh, as eventually. Uh, as we've seen that uh, Jennifer made you part of a text thread where Rob was on there and Jeremy was on there. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 which seemed kind of odd that now you had their numbers. So wh yes. what did Jennifer tell you about that? Uh, about? About Jeremy and, and Rob being on those, now you have their numbers. Right. It was, uh, uh, you know, immediately after, um, again, we saw the phone records about the, the day after, uh, a lot of phone calls that we were, we were talking on the phone. Jennifer, uh, right away, one of the first phone calls, you know, after, after you know, everything happened and I got back, she had told me that, hey, Rob had contacted her and Rob said that he was not going to say anything. Then she told me she got contacted by Jeremy and Jeremy told her that he would never talk about anything that happened over the summer time frame. And so on, on the thread, uh, I had no problem with Rob. Talking on the phone with Jennifer, I had a problem with Jeremy. I didn't like the guy. And, you know, I blamed him for a lot of the abuse. I told her that, but she had said that uh, since this text thread was, you know, like a, a 13 to 14 people long, I think, it was, it was all friends and family. Jeremy was his was one of Jamie's close friends that if he wasn't on the thread It would be suspicious people would ask why was he being left out and she didn't want to answer any of those questions Did she tell you not to call him? No, she didn't say anything, but I'm never gonna talk about I mean part of my training is we don't talk about our missions I was never going to talk and again. This is where she used my honor against me she knew that I would never say anything to Rob, and I never did. And even I kept all those messages, I believe, are on my phone. I've chatted with Rob. Come on. Um, we saw some pictures of uh, credit cards that were uh, sent to you by, by Jennifer. Yes. Uh, did you ever use those? Uh, yes, uh, a, a couple times. Um, what did you buy? I, I believe on the credit cards that got put on, uh, the, the twins, they, it was their senior year in high school, they were, they were uh, graduating that May coming up. Um, right before Christmas we got the, the notice that we had to buy all, all their, their... So you used that card to buy their graduation? Yeah, Jennifer told me, because it was going to be like, I think she, she got them the big package, so I think it was like 300 each, it was like $600. What else did you buy? Them? And then I believe I used, uh, we saw all those uh, uh, sex toys. Uh, she wanted me to, to uh, get Christmas presents uh, for her, so I used it to, to pay for that. Uh, so about $1,000 was put on those cards? Uh, yes, and then once, and then I uh, used, the only time that I used it like for personal stuff out there with the girls was, uh, we were Christmas shopping and uh, bought lunch with it at one of the restaurants there at the mall. But yeah, in total, probably less than that thousand. And that television that we saw in the pictures? Yes. For, was that around Christmas time? That was a Christmas present. Okay. Who sent that? Uh, Jennifer sent Jennifer and Amber. We exchanged, our families exchanged presents. You know, um, Jennifer had, had texted the girls. The girls were all excited. The girls knew what it was. I didn't know Did anything. you also uh, buy airline tickets? No, Jennifer bought them for us. Um, my uh, second oldest daughter, Ashley, uh, during this whole time, uh, she was pregnant. She had my second granddaughter was born September, I think 15th was her birthday. So she bought those tickets, you didn't use the credit cards for those? No, 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 she, she did it herself. One moment. Is that 
Is that everything financially that you received from her? Uh, yeah, I believe so, yes. That you can recall? Yes. And after this, in your mind, uh, were you still on the five-year plan? Were you still on the five-year plan with her at this point? Afterwards, in January? Oh, in, in January? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly... I mean, were you looking to rush in and be with her? No, and then honestly, when, when I, I did it, honestly, even though she asked for it, I honestly thought I was maybe a 50-50 chance. She had never witnessed anything that dramatic happen. I honestly thought that, you know, we might not work out because of that. But I would, I stayed here. I can live with that. Now, there was some talk at some point about a lease that she, uh, there was a lease to a house or what? No, I was having, I was, like I said, going through the divorce, I was going to have to sell the house. And uh, I was looking for, that's when I got arrested. We, uh, we had found a, a rental house to get to. I mean, my credit wasn't that great, and we had talked about how if I had to use her as a, a, you know, a reference or maybe even a, a cosigner on it, that she would be a part of it. But, you know, I would still be paying everything. But she wasn't going to live with you? No, not right off the bat, no. no. Not right off the bat, no. So, in conclusion, sitting here today knowing what you know. Yes. You know that Jamie was not a monster like you, you did. No. Uh, you, uh, you, you hated the fake Jamie. Yes, I did. I, I, we were talking and you, they asked me that and I said, I, even now it's hard. I haven't been able to process everything. I've been locked up. And, but, the real Jamie, what do you feel about the fact that you took his life when he wasn't doing any of the things that Jennifer led you to believe? Jennifer turned me into the monster. I hate it. I destroyed Amber's family. Her dad is dead. Her mom's in prison. There's nothing. She's on her own. 